everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to Blueprints Beyond the Barracks. I'm your host, Jeff Scher, the podcast drills. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. And if you have hard hats, those too, because it's about to get a lot funnier in here. Because please welcome uh, the master of mischief, the Sultan of Soldering, my co host, Jeremy Wrench, Whisperer McIntyre. How's it going, buddy? Good, good, Jeff. How you doing today? Ready to dive into another insightful episode? Oh, you have no idea. I was super excited about this episode because we have an awesome, awesome special guest with us from the homeland heart of Georgia. I am thrilled that we have Ed Kincaid. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ed. I'm sorry. I can put on a spot. Kincaid. <laughs> a Georgian native with a wealth of experience in the trades industry. Ed, it is so awesome to have you on here. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. Thanks, Jeff and Jeremy, for having me here. It's going to be exciting. Looking forward to it. Kincaid. Man, it's great to have Kincaid. you on the show. Kincaid. 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 You got it, man. <laughs> it's freaking Scottish, man. Oh, oh, I, oh, I don't even know. I can't even do a Scottish accent right now. I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> Anyways, Ed, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, let's start from the beginning, man. Uh, growing up as an Army brat and spending time in Frankfurt, Germany, um that must have been quite the experience uh walk me through it how did your upbringing shape your career path in the in the trades it did it did it was it was really from what i remember i was a kid now in germany i was two years old <clears throat> but i can still remember to this day um looking out the windows seeing all the snow on the ground you know dirt germany during the winter is just uh brutally cold um watching my father leave in his uniform and you know mom there taking care of us but just having to move around a lot, different bases, and then eventually getting back home to Georgia, you know, it taught you um, how to adapt, how to be a really self-sufficient, be um, self-reliable as well, just because you, you don't really have the chance to make really close friends, at least where you live, and then by the time you do make some, it's time to move on to the next space. So it was, it uh, taught me a lot of independence, I guess you could say. Yeah, gotcha. I could see how that would go hand in hand uh, with what we're doing now. Um, could you take a moment and, and share with our listeners about some of your military service? I mean, I'm sure we would love to hear some of those experiences during that time. Uh, yeah, most definitely. I uh, joined the Army <clears throat> right out of high school, when I graduated back in 1983, joined the Army Delayed Entry Program in 84, went in in August, and Fort Bliss in August was probably about 110 degrees. It's in El Paso, Texas. That's where we Oof. did our basic training. I can remember on Sundays, you know, when you get a day off, supposedly in basic training, our uh, drill sergeants would say, let's go tan some rocks. We'd be out in the middle of the field, running hmm. sun, sunscreen on rocks, flipping them back over, wait 30 minutes, flip them over again. Uh, that was basic training in a nutshell, oh, but I loved it. You, best shape of my life. Uh, <clears throat> went to my advanced individual training to be a field medic at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, loved it. Got to work with great other soldiers Green Beret guys at the time who were there learning to be medics for their uh, squads or companies or battalions, they would specialize in it. It was pretty cool watching them do it as well. But they even took theirs a little bit farther. They gave, uh, they were being prescribing drugs, you know, prescription drugs for the battlefield. So they had to know a little bit more. Um, my permanent station was Fort Riley, Kansas, the 1st Infantry Division, or Big Red 1, whichever you want to call it. We called it the Big Red 1, um, but we loved it. It was a great time. I thought I was going to have a cush job in a hospital and ended up with a tank battalion spending, I'd say, 95% of my time out in the woods instead of uh, in the rear, uh, but loved it. You know, great time great friends, uh, still talk to some of them to this day. I had an oh, opportunity, wow. had an opportunity as well to, um, go after, I think back when I was in, this was, gosh, I'm aging myself now, 40, 
years ago, it was the expert field medical badge, which at the time it still might be, was the highest non-wartime award that a field medic can get. A grueling um, competition, uh, physical fitness, map reading at night and during the day, uh, shooting any wide gambit of things you do in the military. Um, and the very last day was a 12 mile force road march that you had to get done in three hours or less. Um, that's probably one of the most exciting things that I take away from it, earning that badge, knowing that not every field medic out there has it. Wow. And that, that is actually really impressive. Um, and, and no, they, they, they definitely still have the, uh, the badge there. Um, I, all the all the medics have to go through it um they kind of they kind of make it mandatory as long as you're not on any kind of profile or anything like that you know exactly um, so and, and honestly like kind of seeing some of those individuals with it on um sometimes uh, you, you know just speaking combat experience uh I think it was kind of a relief when some of us seen that medic come up, you know, with, with or without that badge. But, you know, you kind of felt a little bit more comfortable with these these certain medics that did have that badge. And you're right. It was a grueling process. Um, I personally didn't go through it, um, but, you know, I was out there supporting supporting my battle buddies and stuff that, that did go through it. And I even set up the land nav course for him because I was a surveyor back in the day. Yeah, um, that was cool. So, I loved yeah. it. And that was back when we just had compasses or no GPSs. You were yeah, doing it by flashlight and compass. Right. And that's how they did it, too. That's how they do it. There's no. Still. Realist, okay, cool. Yeah. No, they any kind of land nav at all. As far as I know, um, any kind of land nav course you take uh, in the Army, you you are doing it by map and compass and protractor. Uh, that's I don't, cool. You still, did you guys have the small projectors back then, too? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. We sure did. We sure did. Cool. Yeah, get you as as precise as possible. And I will tell you, I I was I was a surveyor, so I once I came through and was in for a couple of years, I started getting a sixth sense of, of direction. But I won't lie, like I definitely used the mills uh, one time instead of the degrees on there. So yeah, that definitely <laughs> definitely caught me off a little bit. Got you halfway to nowhere. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, it kind of like, you know, how was, how was the life out there in the, in the woods? Like for us, it's nowadays, um, you know, a lot of the older, older generation, uh, you know, higher ups now, they're always like, Oh, we have tents now. But I know when I was coming up through basic training, I had uh, little small ho hooches, like two man hooches. Um, Oh yeah. Guys, that's all we had. That's all you yeah, guys had. Yeah. Snap together at the top and then, oh, you, yeah. uh, slept in there tight with your buddy it was uh definitely a learning experience that's for sure well i i told the guy that came that slept with me on the one time i said dude you got a baby wipe or something with your feet because god bless like you either <laughs> sleep if you sleep in here you got to clean those feet man <laughs> when, i can remember that I, when i was in we still had the good old steel pots you know you didn't have oh, the yeah. kevlar helmets anymore and you heated you up some water in that steel pot and if you had a bar of soap you took a nice little bird bath and that was about all you got when you're out in the field all the time wow yeah we we have gotten a little bougie from that <laughs> 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 um they got these things are called jet boils <laughs> and they've been out for a little while now now i i, I know some of the you were talking about the green beret guys i think they caught on to the green berets uh geez quite a few years ago and i know i seen it when probably in 2010 or so once i seen it i seen what he was using i was like bet i'm getting me one of those today because yeah, i don't think i've ever seen those yeah oh yeah they're 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 handy we're not sponsoring them whatsoever but um <laughs> they they are definitely a handy little um propane tank just a small handheld propane tank with a with a, a furnace on top of it that that permutes that that um is a propane or something like that that comes out of there really fast. I mean, have you, wow. you have you messed around with those these new grills, these new um, excuse me, these new um, what do they call them? Um, they're like the stovetop grills. Oh man, like a griddle? Like a griddle? Yeah, it looks like a griddle, but the name brand is is totally blank in my head right now. But anyways, yeah, they've admitted this that the flame out there is to, so precise that heats it up super fast. So if you're wow. cooking cooking some noodles. You're cooking it under like ten seconds. <laughs> the boiling water, jet boil. 
a jet boil, man. Yeah, I know some technicians boil. take that on the job site with them. Jeez. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah jet boil <laughs> is definitely a good one. Um, I mean, I, when I was when I was in, I think MREs just had came out. They finally phased out C <laughs> rations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Seriously. okay. Now you're really showing your age. <laughs> exactly. MREs were something special. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, here I I uh, I think the uh, the meal with spaghetti and meatballs is something special. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's how. When it was. I was in, I think they had beans and franks, chicken a la king, <laughs> and beef stew. Maybe everything else. Uh, you know, that was the only three selections yeah. you had. <laughs> <laughs> now the beef stew sounds good. I do like the beef stew. That that's always, especially when it's cold outside, and you can warm me up some beef stew. That just brings a, a whole different uh, spectrum to life when you're freezing outside That's <laughs> i was gonna say man i don't knock the mres i mean when i was doing commercial construction in my early years there was a army surplus store and we used to buy them by the box and we'd keep them in our trucks man we loved them oh yeah i love their protein bars those things are great protein bars are pretty good yeah they, they have one uh some of them are i think it's called the ranger bar and it's yeah. like it's like packed full of you know whatever like protein and uh some caffeine in there somewhere maybe some sugar or whatever but yeah they're they're they are pretty good they are pretty good um i would say my i would say my least favorite meal was uh the omelet um i don't know if you've heard of that one come out yet but the omelet no, is a uh, vegetarian meal and it's absolutely oh disgusting. no way yeah gotta have meat <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> absolutely uh, they might su- supplement it with like some peanut butter or whatever, but no, nah, it just, bleh. Bleh. I mean, I did have it one time. I did have a one time to try it out. And then I had it a second time because, um, that, that was all that was left. We, we ran out of our, our, our MREs, like, uh, you know, it, I mean, it was the time we just didn't get that supply back, um, uh, quick enough. So we ran out, we ran out and that was all that's left. And I made sure everybody else ate before I did. So. That was the last thing. I was like, yep, I'm going to choke it down. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, so let's, let's circle back here. So um, let me ask you, Ed, what, what kind of, what, uh, what led you to really make that switch from um, bartending to maintenance? Um, <clears throat> the hospitality industry, I mean, you can be in the worst mood of your life, but you still have to go in and treat everybody, you know, like they're your guests, you know, you're, you're there to take care of them. That wasn't the big thing, but that was one of the drawbacks of it. You could be in your worst mood and you still have to kill them with kindness. Um, the maintenance industry, you know, it's almost, um, or the, how can I say it? Uh, it's not an individual business because you, find guys that you work with and you work as a team, but there is a lot of individuality to it. Sometimes you're working alone and by yourself, you know, whether you need help, you know, you can call uh, somebody to help you get the job done, but the hours in the, in in the hospitality industry, the travel, it, it, you really have no family life whatsoever. And I had always done projects for friends and family and, Hey, come help me do this. Come help me build a deck. Can you check out why my drains are clogged? Why is my dishwasher not working? Why is we don't have any hot water in the house? And just being able to do that and seeing the look on their face when they actually have their needs met is uh, pretty much what gratifies me about the job. It's almost like a instant gratification, if you will, lay inside. Something's wrong. There's dirt there. You put grass down. It's nice and green. Taking care of uh, somebody's issues in their home is uh, very, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Exonerating. Self-gratifying. Self yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Exactly. Just being able to help them and get it done. Yeah, I mean, in my experience, uh, one of my favorite things is after I wrap up a job, just seeing that that happy customer, and uh, how much ha- you, at that moment you feel like a superhero, right? Because they're they're, they're exactly. just smiling. And you get to stand back and go, "Yep, I did that," you know. And exactly. uh, you know, the, the old story, you know, I, I'm one of those guys. You can drive through a certain part of the the United States, and I go, "I built that. I built that. I fixed that. I fixed that." <laughs> right? But um, Ed, let me let me ask you a question though. You know, how did your time in the army uh, prepare you for a career maintenance? What What are some things that carried over, 
you know, any, any particular disciplines or, uh, you know, play, walk me through it. I would say, um, dependability foremost, you got to be able to depend on whether it's your squad or your company or, you know, who you're working for. They need to depend on you to get <clears throat> the issue taken care of. Um, my work ethic, uh, I've never, I think I'm going on 60 and I've probably had 10 jobs in my whole life, you know, starting when I was 15 years old. And you talk to some people that are, have hundreds of jobs by the time they're my age. Uh, so my work ethic is there. Uh, attention to detail, especially. Uh, my wife still gets on me uh, in my personal life because of the army. I fold clothes a certain way. I haven't <laughs> stopped rolling them too long ago. I used to roll all my shirts, especially when we go on vacation. Roll my oh. shirts, roll the shorts. Oh, you have to. You have to. Oh, yeah. You can fit more <laughs> in a suitcase. Just attention to detail. Um, you name it, the Army just instills that in you. It's not so much <clears throat> individuality as it is um, a core that you can um, rely on. You know, I have great acquaintances and or friends, if you want to call them, that I can pull knowledge from and vice versa. If they need me for something, they can do the same thing. But it's just that core, knowing you got that backup, helping you out in, in, in your times of need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, you, you hit you hit something that I, I want to kind of expound on, the attention to detail, right? I think that when military service members go in the trades, I personally, I, I see the, the uncanniness of it because, you know, we do everything in the military. Uh, it's got to be dress right dress, you know, and, and you got to be able exactly. to look. You got to be able to look down the line and see that we're perfect row. Um, I don't know. It, 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 is that OCD being instilled with us? <laughs> it is. They're instilling OCD. <laughs> there you go. I mean, but at, at the same time, like I, I know uh, just for a second ago, we were talking about how your truck was set up. And I mean, it, it just carries over and it carries over so well. You know, um, I mean, from I, I think from a standpoint, as, as far as the actual work itself goes, the workload and whatnot, I really think it, it, it carries over so well into the trades, you know. Um, now, I, Ed, I know you've done a, a wide range of, of different plumbing work from main lines uh, to far, faucet cartridges, heck, even water heaters. Um, can you tell us a little bit of something about the most memorable project that you've tackled so far? Um, <clears throat> there's actually a couple. I remember um, there was this one house, and this is memorable. It might not be. I'll try to keep it clean, but... Uh, <laughs> I was changing a pump. So well, if, it, it ha if it has to do with, with dirt, with, <laughs> with, with plumbing, I'm sure it's going to be a little dirty. So go for it. <laughs> I was uh, replacing a sump pump in a house and you know, they have a See, check. It's valve. already dirty. Yep. <laughs> go for they, it. They all have a check valve to keep from everything back flowing into your house. Well, I didn't turn it off when I cut the pipe and got a nice misty oh, no. spray of sewage Ooh. water right in the face. So that Ooh. was a treat. Yeah, that was. Uh, oh, the wife loved laundry night that night, didn't she? <clears throat> I know it. And I learned my lesson. I'll never do that again. Uh, another one that stands out is this uh, typical job. I was called out to do a water heater leak. Uh, pull up to the house. There's a river of water coming underneath the garage door there's algae built up on that runoff who knows how long it's been going on and when that tenant opened the garage door literally half the garage was just full of black and you know i'm not supposed to say it but mold is what it looked like to me it was probably just oh, algae geez. and mildew but oh. this thing had to be leaking for months um ended up getting the leak stopped cut the old water heater out <clears throat> installing the new i had to rebuild the alcove the water heater was in cut out all the rotten drywall that's been soaked for three months i mean it was just falls apart it turns into clay yeah. uh peel all that out replaced any of the <clears throat> framing that was damaged because of all the moisture built it all back painted it cleaned it up good as new you couldn't even tell anything was wrong man that's 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 uh, super impressive, Ed. Uh, for those who don't know, Ed and I have worked together quite a few times. 
um, to know that you're a one-stop shop, you know, between the plumbing world and even doing a little carpentry in there with the, the drywall um, and even cleaning up the uh, the mold there. Super impressive. Uh, I couldn't imagine what that was like. Uh, I've, I've seen something similar. Uh, can't say I've experienced that particular one, but, you know, for our listeners that are who might be considering a career in plumbing or uh, any of the trades, really, um, what are what's some advice that you have for them coming out? Um, learn as much as you possibly can. It doesn't matter um, what you know skill you want to go in: electrical, plumbing, heating and air. I mean, knowledge is the best thing in the world, and there's so many different avenues you can learn it friends in the business, uh, obviously the internet, schools, just don't be afraid to learn more, take it on. Don't say, oh, I don't know how to do that. You know, jump in and do it because there's been many of things that I didn't know how to do and now I know how to do them. Just trial and error. That's what it is. Just just stay strong. I know you've called me. That phone a friend is is such a powerful tool. It is. It is. Uh, another thing that I know you and I, and I think Jeff has, uh, we've talked about it too, is, uh, you know, we, we call it the YouTube certification, right? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> back in our day, we, we didn't have YouTube, you know, you had to figure it out or <laughs> ask an old man, you know? <laughs> exactly. But yeah, wise words there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, before we wrap it up, uh, do we got, you got any other funny, uh, memorable moments from your tides in the trades that, that you'd like to share? Um, let's see. Yeah. And it just actually shows, you know, everybody's human. Nobody's perfect. Uh, I actually went out to a house to view some fire damage because of the next door neighbor's house burnt down. Um, and I actually assessed the wrong home. I was, went to the wrong, all I see, I pull in the neighborhood. I see the house that burned down. I see a house next to it. That's not burnt down, but has some damage. I did my assessment on that house thinking, oh. okay, here's what needs to be done. Windows need to be replaced. Vinyl siding's melted. Uh, soffit needs to be repaired. Sure. Come to find out it was the house to the right of the one that burnt down. Oh. I went there by mistake. And that was pointed wow. out to me by a coworker of mine that we do a lot of jobs with. And it really humbles you when you think you're as good as you've can be but then it brings you back down to earth no nope, i made a mistake i was looking at the wrong house <laughs> hey we're, we're only human you know exactly oh yeah. boy so you know it's, it's funny because i have a, I have a, a similar um a mishap uh, i was uh on a much smaller scale um you know i, I was stationed uh out in uh, hawaii and um you know uh out there you you really learn that barbecuing or just cooking outside in general is uh, the nostalgic behind it all. It's just awesome. <laughs> so I was out there barbecuing it up, you know, uh, getting the, getting the charcoal nice and nice and warm. And then, uh, yeah, next thing you know, it, my, my siding started to, to melt on. Me. Oh no. <laughs> yes. Been there, done that. Yep. Uh, to the, so the, the fix of it all was, is that I, I, I didn't know how to, and, um, trial and error, like you were talking about just a second ago. Um, I, I didn't even know, actually at the time, I really didn't know where to get siding from, honestly, to be honest <laughs> with you, just because, you know, uh, the only place I knew where to get any kind of siding was on the side of my house. So yeah, I took a little piece off one side and put it on the other and, and it was, Hey, you know what? It looked brand new. <laughs> hey, rob peter to pay paul every now hey, and then. sometimes you gotta do that you know <laughs> i'm not saying it's the right way to do it you know uh, True that. I, you know to be honest with you I, I don't think i even thought of going to lowe's home depot or or any of that um i can't even remember if there was a home in lowe's depot on the island at the time now that i think about it but uh, i guess that's for a later episode <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a quick story I want to tell before uh, you take it back over there, Jeff. Um, a, a memorable moment that I have with Ed. Um, we were working on a job together, and his truck happened to be parked outside. And in the back seat, it had a fold-down middle seat with cup holders. Oh, it. man. <laughs> yeah. You know where I'm going, Ed. I know um, where this is going. So I had this bright idea. I'm going to pull a prank on Ed. I went inside, and I grabbed a tuna can. 
and I poked a hole in it and I dumped all the juice out and I put it in that center console cup holder so the hole was pointing up and I folded it back in and left it in his back seat for weeks. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was waiting daily for that call from Ed to let me man, this truck stinks. Oh, Middle of no. the summer, too, I believe. Middle oh. of the summer. <laughs> in Georgia. Out there in Georgia. Oh, in Georgia. Lord. No, thank you. No. Great too story. Buddy. I think too Ed buddy. found it too fast. So Yep. And, and, you know, John tries to play, uh, a buddy of mine, John tries to play that trick on anybody he can. Oh, I'm going to put a tuna can in the car. It was oh. a good one. It was a good one. Yeah, it was. Ed, it's been a pleasure uh, hearing about your journey, man. Thank you for being on the show, and thank you for sharing your insights and experiences with us today. I had a great time having you on. I'm sure Jeff has a couple words, too. Well, uh, thank you guys for having me. It's been a blast. You know, you brought back a lot of memories. Uh some that I wish I could have forgot about, but yeah, it was a great time. <laughs> no, we can't forget any of those memories. Come on now. Uh, you know, and that, that's it for this episode of Blueprints Beyond the Barracks. Uh, big thank you again, Ed. Kikaid. <laughs> uh, Kikaid. Kikaid. No, there we go. What a, I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for show, for joining us, man. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, this has been an awesome experience. It uh, has. And, and, and uh, I hope, uh, you know, from this podcast that, you know, some of our soldiers and some of our listeners, listeners out there um, can kind of take your words of wisdom. Um, and, you know, you know what, what I think, I think um, some of these stories, you know, some of them mishaps or whatnot, like we said, we make mistakes. I think sometimes it's, it's called the stupid tax is what I like to call it. You know, you, you kind of got to pay exactly. stupid taxes every once in a while because how is you, you do. right? You, do. you know, so I, I think that's a really good learning tool. If anything, um, I got a I got a sign that hangs above my desk. It says "Measure twice, cuss once." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I need to learn that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, whether or not you're you're out there you're listening for the stupid tax, so you don't pay for it, or you're you're just listening to listen, be sure to tune in next time for more stories, laughs, and inspiration from the world of the trades. Until next time, keep those blueprints turning. And your tuna cans with one hole. Oh guys. stop! Oh stop! Oh, stop! <laughs> That's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> All right, so now the time is for me to get my knife hand out and get serious because I am the Joe Sargent Podcast and Joe Sargent. Telling you to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Do me a favor, for the love of God. Just comment on this stuff. Uh, we got a Q&A that's on there. I would love to see any, any kind of comments that you guys can, in, in, that you can bring up or anything that you guys want to hear about. You want to hear more from... Uh, from Ed, some guys like Ed, let me know, let us know so we can get him back on, on here and give some more wacky stories. <laughs> I'm sure he's got plenty of them. Uh, until next time, everybody stay frosty.